For the Lord is good and his mercy, hallelujah, is everlasting, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Ah, we thank you for your mercy tonight, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, God. We're desperate for you tonight, oh God. Come on, souls are crying out. We want to keep in prayer those. Mama Dolly, Sister Nicole, those in the hospital. Hallelujah, Mama Rita, we want to pray for them that are sick. Hallelujah, for the word says they are healed by his stripes. Hallelujah. We thank you for the blood, God. Let the blood flow. Hallelujah. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, won't you tell somebody there's power in the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all looking at me. Tell somebody beside you, there's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, Jesus.
never lose his power. It will never lose his power. Can you stand on your feet tonight? Amen. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Won't you just lift your hands just for a moment? Hallelujah. Oh, we flow to the highest mountain. Hallelujah. It's flowing. 
Hallelujah. If you have a sick or a need in your body, we're going to ask that you come up. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to pray as a church for the names that's those that's not here, but the names that's up here. We want to keep them in prayer. Those that's, that didn't get a chance to put their request in. I want us to pray as a church like we really believe in the power of the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't wait on me, but would you just lift up your, lift up your voice right now? God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would heal God in the name of Jesus. Lord, it was that blood, God, that you shed, God, a long time ago. Where in your Bible it says, God, by your stripes we were already healed, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, the same blood that you shed back then on Calvary, God. Lord, let it be the same blood, God, Lord, that comes, oh God, in contact with each individual, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come against every ache and every pain, God. Lord, every infection, God, in the name of Jesus, every virus, God, every symptom, God. Lord, we come against every doubt, God, in the name of Jesus, God, and we dispatch, God. Lord, that your faith, oh God, will rise in the name of Jesus, God, wherever they are, God. Lord, we send your angels, God, in the name of Jesus, God, to heal, God, in the name of Jesus. Send the protection around us, God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, if you believe in it, one more time, would you clap your hands? Come on, don't sound like you're defeated. You ought to clap your hands like you really mean it. Tonight, I receive something that nobody else has gotten. Tonight is the night that I receive victory in my healing. Tonight is the night where I receive faith where that was. Come on, you ought to clap your hands like you really mean it tonight. Come on, your sickness is gone. Your pain is gone. Your disease is gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I'm looking around and there's people who were sick this week. Last I heard. And just to see that they pressed out, they're not sick no more, but to see that they pressed out, some people would continue on and say, well, I haven't, you know, necessarily uh, healed all the way, but we are in the biggest hospital that there is, the biggest doctor that there is, is here tonight. Amen. <laughs> Sister Jackson. She cracked me up. Uh, yeah, I fell earlier. She wanted me to tell this. I fell earlier, and my arm was uh, was hurting. I fell on my arm. It was a pretty hard fall. I hadn't fall fell a long time ago. Uh, last time I fell, I was on uh, training wheels. But uh, I fell earlier today, and, and I don't have any pain like I used to have, like I did earlier. But it's because the blood of Jesus, who's still healing, he's still reaching. Amen. So all you have to do is have faith. Amen. Would you clap your hands one more time for Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go into our tithes and our offering. Amen. We want you to continue to sow into the kingdom of God. Amen. I believe we're about... 8.15 how much do we have on our oh we said, well we have a little bit left $20,029 um, to pay off this building and I believe that we we've raised 8000 so we're just a little bit before we raise I mean before we pay off the whole building and then we go into our life center. Not to mention the other buildings that we're going to sow into. Amen. So that we can sow the gummies, I mean, uh, so that we can preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. With uplifted hands. 
I invoke the spirit of Goshen upon you and your family. May you and your family be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go ahead and put your hands together. It's Amen. The Lord is the Lord is good and merciful. Amen. to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is good and worthy to be praised. You may be seated while, just for a moment if you don't mind, be seated and let me reiterate what Brother Josh was saying. Um, we are at $20,029 for a total payoff of the property that we, and all, that's all the physical property land that we own that's all we owe on all of it um, every loan whatever it's all that's it now we have raised 8,000 of that already so you do the math that drops us down to really we need to raise another 12,000 and 29 dollars Amen, amen. And we've been asking you to keep on doing whatever it takes to pay it off. Now, without robbing, without stealing, without selling drugs. We don't want you breaking any laws, but we want to pay it off. Amen. And we're too close. We're too close to lose out on this. We're going to make it happen because we have other things that God desires for us to do. And we're waiting on this to happen, to make that happen. Amen. So we're going to continue to do that. And it's real simple. It's real, if we get 12 people, we'll just give $1,000. We're done. <laughs> 24 people to give 500. We're done. Catching the, are you catching this? Yes, sir. 50 people to give 250. Yes. We're done. Yes. It is doable. Now here's, I want this done. I believe that we can make this happen by the 15th of next month. I believe that we can make this happen by the 15th. Amen. 
Sister Candace is doing food, uh, photo shoots. Yeah. Amen. She's got a couple of orders in right now. 100% of that is going toward the mortgage. So that's coming down. There are pledges out that are pledges out that are coming in. I, I got a text today that the balance on that on one of the pledges is going to be paid off. Amen. Here real soon, and so that's happening. And we're all going to dig deep, and we're going to give, and we're going to do as unto the Lord. Now, somebody said you're just talking about money. You want to pay off the building? Why? Well, here's the purpose of paying off the building. Debt is slavery. It's bondage. And I don't like being in debt. Matter of fact, the Bible says that we're no longer the borrowers, but we're the lenders. So this is a transition from being a borrower into a lender to where the money that comes in is not going out to usury of other people, but it's going out to be used in the kingdom of God to bless other people. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. So God is doing some great things, and we're excited about that and trusting him and knowing that he's able. Now, now, let me kill the elephant in the room. Let me kill the elephant in the room. Compromise is sin. Compromise is sin. And we're not going to be a church of compromisers. Amen. Amen. I get it. Uh, icy roads. I get it. Yeah. Amen. And we can't get things done. Then we are not going to. Uh, we may have to close church or something like that because we have no choice. But if I can go to the store, and if I can go to work, and if I can go visit my friends, please don't tell me that you can't come to church. If you can do all those things, amen. But then you say, I, well, I'm a little scared. Well, you wasn't scared with everything else. Now, let me tell you this. I'm going to talk about some things tonight, and this is not yet, 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 because we are, we are still waiting on our candidate to be baptized. I'm not going to jump in. She's ready. She's waiting on me. Oh, amen. Let me be quiet. Uh, well, I'm not quite yet. Sickness is of the devil, and we're not going to allow ourselves to become prey to fear and or sickness. Come on. God brought us all the way through 2020 with all the COVID garbage. Amen. And we're not going to just listen to people, well, they're sick, so I'm sick, because we get that sympathy sickness. And I'm here to tell you right now, you better stop that before it really happens. Amen. Amen. So stand strong. Amen. Well, look at here. God bless you. Amen. That water's nice and warm, nice and warm. Y'all lift your hands and just pray. Make sure y'all praying. Come on. Don't you lift your hands this way right now. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Come on. That's it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Chilled my body, but not my soul. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus.
Amen. One more time, give the Lord a hand. Praise. For those that are watching, amen. That was not an interruption. Amen. That's what church is about. It's about souls being delivered. Amen. So we celebrate today. The Bible says that the angels began to celebrate and rejoice. Amen. And that's exactly what we're going to do as well. Amen. 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 Y'all all right? I need to turn the heat down a little bit. Y'all, y'all right? Somebody said no. Amen. God bless you. It's good to see you. Family okay? Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. That's a future praise singer. I was saying before um, the baptism, I said, you know, the, there is a spirit in the world that causes us to gravitate or become uh, what the enemy is desirous of us to become. It is, unfortunately... Unfortunately, in this season, running rampant, uh, everything that happens or seems to happen, we tend to want to be victims of it. Touch your neighbor and say, you're not a victim. You're victorious. Come on. Amen. Touch your other neighbor and say, amen. You didn't lose. You're winning. Amen. Amen. Touch you another neighbor and let them know you're not only winning, but you're a winner. Amen. Now touch yourself and say, self, you're not sick. And those of you that are watching from home, touch yourself. Come on and say, self. You're not sick. You're well. Amen. 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 The spirit of fear, uh, like I said, it ran rampant all of 2020 and, and then creeped into 2021. And, and it's been trying its best to get a hold on the mind of the people of God. Uh, I, I don't give... Uh, COVID a lot of attention because I don't feel it warrants it. However, like I said, there's a couple of things that happened during that period. One was it established, it established who is and who's not. It established some things. It just, and, and more people were taken out by the fear than by the virus. And and, but, and so you would think, Brother Perkins, that because we're winners and that's old and that's not something we're struggling with now, that it would no longer be affecting us because we came out of something. But unfortunately, what you really find is that just coming out of something does not necessarily mean that you let it come out of you. Israel came out of Egypt and a whole generation had to die off so that, uh-huh, uh-huh, mm -mm, so that, uh, uh, that, the, that Egypt would come out of them. Uh, you, you understand? So a whole generation of people who came out meant that their babies had to, to take the next phase because their parents still had were holding on to some things that they ought not to. And if you don't believe that, just ask yourself, why did they build a golden calf if they were serving the one God? Because Egypt, was the, the, the habits were still in them. The, the fear was still in them. The, the fear of, be, of, a, of a slave master getting on them was still in them. The, and so they began to be to, to revert back to some of those behaviors and some of those activities. And it created a mindset that you will find happens throughout the history of the people of God. 
They do well for a season, and then when they get on top, then all of a sudden they begin to look across the field, and then they begin to entertain the things of the world, and then the next thing you know, they're crashing and burning, and then they begin to pray and fast, and people begin to do things for years to get back to where they should be, and then when God blesses them, guess what happens? They begin to look across the field again, and, and they begin to wonder, why do they have that, and I don't have this, and they, and they begin to want those things, and all of a sudden, the next thing you know, they're getting, they're getting those things, and it looks like everything is going good for them until God pulls his hand away and then he pulls his hand away then they go back into the bondage or go back into the corruption they're with and then the next thing you know guess what happened they're crying out to God because God always has a man in the place he has somebody of faith that just stayed there solid all along and began to still talk about the miracles of God and then all of a sudden God begins to deliver them again and guess what happens they get delivered and they live good for a season then there's a generation that knoweth not God why because the parents forgot to tell them it is not the generation that knoweth not God's fault that they don't know God it is the generation that preceded them because when you begin to be blessed, you can be, get very comfortable. Can I talk to some of my college students that are getting nice jobs now? Don't let your job. Mm. Don't let that sheepskin that you're hanging on the wall uh, with the writing on it. Don't let it become your God. That is not your greatest achievement. When you start getting blessed, sometimes we just get all messed up in it because we think we got it going on. We got it going on, and it feels good. Amen. How many know it feels good to be blessed? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'd much rather be in the blessing than in the midst of the chastisement. Yeah. Chastisement never feels good. But there's some danger in the blessing. I talked about this briefly on the other day. The problem that we have is how we understand what and why things are happening. We began to look at our blessing as this. And then we began to look at the people who are not living for God, who are being bribed with stuff. And their stuff looks like this. And so we look at our blessing, and our blessing doesn't look as big as the bribe. And so we have to take, we, we began to watch the bribe and mock our blessing. We have to be very cautious because to whom much given, much is required. And please understand, the under, please understand and grab hold to what that is saying. Who God blesses, you, it comes with a price. And so there's much required. Why? Because God does not just throw his stuff out there to get thrown away. Huh? You know, I, 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 I understand this generation now and some of, uh, we, we say the millennials and whatever, uh, millennials, whatever. And I understand it right now, but they were born and raised totally different than my generation was raised. I look at my grandbabies and they're raised totally different than my generation was raised. Amen. Uh, I, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they, they, you know, I know people think that I'm mean, but I, I tried my best to be a blessing in my kids' life and do for them, but I also taught them. I don't care what everybody else is getting for free. You're going to have to learn to work for yours. Why? Because if I just give it to you, you're not going to what? Appreciate it. And because of that, you don't want to do what's required. Does anybody remember that first car you got that you didn't change the oil in? And because somebody gave it to you, you just drove it and, and you just hoped that it would work. And you got in it one day and all of a sudden, poof, and it didn't work anymore. And you just couldn't figure out and you would walk away and leave it where it sat. Because it didn't mean anything to you anymore because it no longer worked like you wanted it to work. I'm going to get into some scriptures here in a minute. Y'all just stick with me. And the problem is, is that's how we treat the blessings of God. We treat the blessings of God. You give it to me. And you're supposed to give it to me because I'm blessed and highly favored. And I'm supposed to have it. And so I just use it like I want to use it. Do with it what I want to do with it. And when it stops working, I just leave it where it's at. 
But let me help you with this. The blessings of God are yea and amen. Even though it doesn't seem like it's working in your favor, that blessing is still doing its job. Stop. Listening to the bribe on the outside is trying to pull you away. In the book of Proverbs, you know the scripture is not new. It's in, I've read it and, and talked about it many times, many times before. Proverbs 4 and 5 says, get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. In other words, stick with it. When you get wisdom, stick with it. Even when it's out of fashion. Even when the world says it doesn't matter anymore. Even when the new, the, your peers are ignoring it and rejecting it. Huh? You cleave to it. Don't you let go of it. Don't decline. Don't let it decline from the, don't let these words really decline from your hearing and your understanding. Get an understanding. Get wisdom. Forget it not. Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get it. Wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Now here's the thing. Some of y'all are scared of wisdom. Look at your neighbor and say, you scared of wisdom. Because wisdom does two things. Wisdom begins to tell you to stop when you want to go. And wisdom is always attributed to gray hair. And so you don't want gray hair and you don't want to stop. So you don't want to gain wisdom, you just want to keep doing what you're doing. Is there anybody that understands what I'm saying, that we like to plead, uh, plead ignorance? Don't tell me that way I don't know, that I'm not supposed to do it, and that I'm okay. But my people perish for their lack of knowledge. Uh, you see, so you can't let that happen to you, so you have to get wisdom, keep wisdom, understand that wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get it. And with all thy getting, please make sure that you get an understanding. So don't just get wisdom, but get understanding. It's kind of like when we, we're doing this now, we have our, our pamphlets out to do the, the read the Bible in a year. Hope you're still doing that. And we're doing the read the Bible in a year, but that is reading. Watch this. You're reading wisdom. That doesn't mean you're necessarily understanding what you're reading. There are times that I'm reading and I've got to read that same sentence over and over and over. And sometimes i got to stand up and read it out loud because something isn't quite clicking. But I, if I just leave it there without understanding, all I've done is got some wisdom without understanding. means I can't apply what I've just learned. Touch your neighbor and say, please learn to apply the word. Don't just read the word. Mm. It is important to you. Now, in the book of Joel, or Joel, depending on where you're from, <laughs> the second chapter, verse 28, reads like this. And it shall come to pass afterwards. His promises are what? Yea and amen. It shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my, he's talking as God, my spirit upon who? All flesh. Now please understand, let's go back for a second. And it shall come to pass afterwards. We like the latter part of that. We, we quote the latter part. He's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Yeah. But we forget that it can't come just, just because you want it to come. It's afterwards that I will pull out my uh, spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. 29 says, and also upon the servant and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. So what he's saying is I am not going to have any respect of person. I'm going to pour it out on all flesh. Nudge your neighbor and say all flesh. That means you. Nudge yourself and say that means me too. 
and your servants and your handmaids. He's going to get it. Everybody's going to get it. And I will show wonders in the heavens. I will show wonders where? In the heaven. Huh? And where else? In the earth, blood, and fire, and pillars of smoke. Now, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We were happy for a second. Because after these things, what's coming? The Spirit of God is going to be poured out on all flesh. And then guess what's going to happen after that? Then there's going to be what? Wonders in heaven and in the earth. And then blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Something about that doesn't sound so fun. The sun shall be turned into darkness. I don't like the cold. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into what? Blood. Before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. Please underline that in your Bible. The terrible day of the Lord. Because in all you're getting, you need to get what? An understanding. What is it? What is he talking about? What is he talking about? Here we are in Job. What is Job? What is the prophet talking about? And I'm glad you asked. Same book, first chapter, first verse. Because in, in order to get an understanding of what just happened in chapter 2, <coughs> you're going to have to know what took place in chapter 1. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, she old men, and give ear. Why would he be talking to the old men? Remember what I told you. It is not the now generation's fault. Now some of y'all are saying, well, I'm out of it. That's not my problem now. No, 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 no. No millennials, no, no, no young people, younger people. Why? Because now you having babies. And you can't blame daddy for not telling you. When you have a word, a Bible on your app, uh, on your phone, on your computer, a Bible. Y'all buying Bibles that y'all like to, to wave around that you got them. And you can still see that the pages haven't been popped. You see what I'm saying? So now you can't blame somebody else. Now understand, it might have been our fault that we didn't get it to you in time, but now it's your fault if you don't get it for yourself. And then save yourself from this untoward generation. And now it's your fault if you don't give it to the babies. So hear ye, hear this ye old men, wisdom, and give ear all ye inhabitants of the land. So then it transitioned. Men, I'm going to talk to you, you wise people who's supposed to be wise. Let me come to you first. But I'm not stopping there. He's talking to all the inhabitants of the land. Have this been in your days? Or even in the days of your father? Question mark. So what's going on? Something's happening. And he's saying, have you ever seen this happen before? Has this ever been in your day? And he says, tell ye your children of it. Tell ye of your children of it. Huh? And let your children tell who? Their children. And their children what? Another generation. There possibly will come in our lifetime when your talking device, your computerized instrument will no longer support your Bible apps. Where you'll Google things about Jesus, about God, about the Bible, and you'll get a red flag. And you won't be able to retain that. There may come a time where you'll go and try to find a Bible, but you can't buy one because they've been banned. Can I talk to you about getting this word and hiding it in your heart? And making sure that you talk that word, speak that word into your children, but not as you are reading them a night-night story, but by you're telling them these are the facts of life. Tell your children of it. The last time you told your children your testimony, how God brought you out. 
Uh, now, please understand it when I say this. Be cautious because we're not going to brag about how you used to dance in the club. But how God delivered you from the club. Don't be telling them about how you used to enjoy getting high. No, 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 no. Don't tell them no joy about sin. You tell them, I'm glad that God took me out of the hands of the enemy just in time. Tell your children about Calvary. Tell them what happened. Tell them about the rejection. Tell them about the evil that this world has perpetrated. Tell them, amen, about what it takes to be saved. Tell them. And have them tell their children. And their children will tell their children. We often uh, criticize as adults uh, what our children do now. I remember then uh, when I was coming up, and they would say, you could do all the latest dances and sing all the latest songs, but you couldn't quote a scripture. Now we have a generation that can quote a couple of scriptures and still know all the latest dances and still know all the latest uh, words to the songs. And, and now they've got super thumbs because they have exercised them on the game consoles and have great control in that. But then when it comes to having stamina in prayer, oh, watch out, and being able to discern good from evil and evil from good, there is a drop off that is so drastic. And some of it, and let me tell you, some of it, parents, is our fault because we allow them to entertain themselves. With things that are not of God more than things of God. Why? Because it's convenient for our lives. Oh, but will it be convenient when they're burning, baby? Will it be convenient when eternity hits and somebody don't make it? Tell your children and, and them tell their children and their children another generation. What are you telling them? Watch what verse 4, because it doesn't sound like good news. Everything that we need to teach our children is not always good news. We want to give them candy. Right? Let me show you. God is good. And all the time. Oh, y'all got that down like y'all rehearsed that. Because we like the good of God. We like all that. And he is good all the time. But there's times when he's being good to us that we don't like how he's being good to us. I never enjoyed a spanking growing up. I, ne I, I didn't have time out. That was not, they didn't even come with nothing stupid like that when I was young. I, I, didn't, I didn't enjoy punishments because we, did, we got the spanking and the punishment. It wasn't a tap, tap, okay, now you can go back to what you were doing. No, it was a tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap. I'm not until I'm tired. I'm not going to stop tapping. And then, can, but baby, mama, can I go outside? No. What, are you kidding me? You came and asked me, can I go out? Do you think I sweated to whip your behind to let you go back to what I just whipped you out of? So there's sometimes we're in the midst of chastisement for the things that we're doing and we don't understand those things. Why? Tonight I'm talking to you about understanding the why. Why is this happening? Here he goes. Talk to your children. Tell them that which the pommel worm had left had the locust eaten. Tell them about because of our sin and our trespasses, God has removed his hand. And what the locust didn't get, the canker worm. And that which the canker worm had left had the gallop. In other words, the enemy mm, had, be, had been given full reign. Why? Because you left your first love. Now he's saying, talk to your children. Tell them these things. Why? Why am I going to tell my children about what happens when I misbehave? <laughs> Why am I going to tell them about the punishment of God? Why? Because I want them to understand that, yes, God is good, but also, amen, God has a rod too, amen, and he will chasten whom he loves. 
And so he says, I'm going to take away everything because when you read this text, it just sounds like there's going to be a little, little loss of some vegetation. No, that means famine in the land. Amen. And you say, well, wait a minute. No, no, no. What your cattle will eat is dead. So when your cattle can't eat, guess what happened to them? They died. What they were going to grind in the meal to make your bread when there's nothing to grind, guess what's left? Nothing. Are you, pre are you understanding what I'm trying to tell you? First get an understanding, why is this happening? Why am I going through this? Why is this happening in life? Why, amen, are we getting a snowstorm like we're getting throughout the country? Why did COVID come in? Why is this, why are people losing their jobs? Why are people losing their mind? Why are people losing their faith? And so he tells them, tell them about this, that there was nothing left. And then tell them, awake ye drunkards. <laughs> and weep. And how all. <laughs> ye drinkers of wine. Oh, no, see, all this stuff is okay. We can, a little sip of wine going to hurt you. But here's the, here's the scripture. This ain't me. This ain't keep telling you. This is the Lord telling you. Awake ye drunkards and weep. Cry about what's going on in your life because you have hid your face in a bottle. Now please understand, it is not just speaking about alcohol, but anything that you put your faith in to try to cover up the pain because of the punishment you have, your, your complaining. So he says, awake ye and weep and how all ye drinkers of wine because of the new wine. For it is cut off from your mouth. That that you depended on is gone. And that medication that you thought was going to help you come out of what you was in is now gone. Uh, and that little boy, that little girl that you thought you couldn't live without is now gone. Huh? The Bible says, for a nation is come upon my land. Strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. Now, please understand this. Please understand the text here. A nation has come upon whose land? God's land. Who gave them permission? But we invited them. We invite. Is this okay? Because I'm talking to you earlier, I told you compromise is sin. And when you begin to walk in these things, you'll feel okay until. Huh? How many of y'all know people who apologize? I'm so sorry, but they're not sorry. And they would have never been sorry if they didn't get caught. Huh? Until something happened and now they're being penalized for what they did. Now that I'm sorry. You wasn't sorry five minutes ago when you were committing the crime. You're only sorry now because you got caught. Matter of fact, if you kept, if nobody caught you, you would say that God allowed you to do it. You'd do it again. He hath laid my vines to waste and barked my fig tree, took the bark off the tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. In other words, everything that you thought that God, oh, remember that? Remember that little, that little blessing? Remember that blessing you had? But it didn't look good because the bribe over there looked better than the blessing? Huh? Oh, I would go to church, but, you know. I gotta work these extra hours. I, I would, I would, I would worship God, but you know, I, I you know, I this this bribe over here is calling me. This bribe, this this over here just looking so good and tantalizing. You know, your blessing looked like a hot dog, and uh, and, and and that bribe looked like filet mignon. But what you don't understand that it is just hocus pocus. It's full of nothing. There's nothing there. Clouds without water. There's nothing there. Uh, just tink tinkling symbols have nothing, but God is giving you substance, but you don't like manna because manna didn't taste like what it tasted like when you was in Egypt. I don't like heavenly food because that earthly food is calling me. Uh, you brought me all the way out here, Moses. You, you got me all the way out. 
out here, amen, and we're going to die out here. We have nothing to eat, and God is raining down provision day after day. Never have you had a day that you were hungry or without it, but you're complaining because it don't look like you want it to look. Be careful. Be careful. Be faithful over the few. Y'all trying to be ruler over the many before you have faithfulness of the few. You trying to jump in front. You trying to put the cart before the horse. You're trying to elevate yourself and get your own stuff going on right now. But God is trying to tell you, hold up, hold up. I got this thing. But I can't do it if you keep getting in the way. This is going to make a little bit of sense in a minute. I, I'm just going through the scriptures so I can lay a foundation so that we can talk about what's going on. He barked your trees. He hath made it clean. It's bare. There's nothing there. The branches thereof are made white. means that, there's, that nothing will even grow on that anymore. That tree is bare, literally, bare to the elements. You remove the bark off the tree. That's what keeps the insects away from eating the tree. That's what keeps disease from eating the tree. Oh, no. yeah, somebody better put on their whole armor. There is a purpose behind this. Uh, that, that's on the outside that God has given you for protection. Mm. Oh, that's a holiness of scripture right there. That that's on the outside is to protect your inside. But he's saying because these people have come, oh, this is happening now all of a sudden. That which should protect you is gone. Verse 8 says, lament like a virgin. Girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. <laughs> the meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priest, the Lord's ministers mourn. I wonder why. Because if you don't tell the truth from up here, huh? As the head goes, so goes the body. So we can have a lot of sickly, uneducated people that don't know anything about God that feel churches clap their hands and say amen and leave out. Just as bound as they came in. It is not my job, listen to me, to entertain you. It is my job to feed you, to tell you the truth. Whether you accept it or not is not my problem. Whether you buy into it or not is not my problem. That's not my job. My job is to tell you the truth and what you do with the truth is up to you. The priest, the Lord's ministers, they mourn. Now, let's examine a couple of things. First of all, the entire book of Joel was written to call the nation into repentance. The prophet was given a word from God to cause the people to move into repentance. Are you hearing me? And so even when you look at his name, Joel means Yahweh is God. Amen. The locust is what is being talked about here, and especially in chapter 3, you find it, that God chose Jerusalem to be the earthly location of his presence. Do you remember this? Jerusalem was his holy city. But the curse that was coming was considered to be, watch this, locusts. I don't know if you ever read the, the, the book of Revelation, there's locusts and there's a coming. There's some things that come to destroy things and to purge things out and sometimes to remind us why we worship him. Now God is not a vengeful God to where he desires to put punishment on us. It's not his goal. He is not trying to punish us. He's, matter of fact, he's wanting to bless us. Touch your neighbor and say, God wants to bless you. So he gave him the law, gave people the law, mankind the law. His people were to keep the law of Moses, the covenants. And as long as they did that, guess what they would do? They would enjoy 
the blessings. Now, let me help you with this. So what do you think the enemy thinks about the people of God being blessed because they are following the laws that God gave, the covenant that God gave? You know, if you do this, I'm going to do this for you. What do you think the enemy attacked? He attacked the why. Have you ever, I'm talking to the parents in here and that have kids that talk, that uh, talk a little bit older than just the toddlers, but, and some of them will do it too. You say, go make up your bed. Why? Well, that was an automatic whap, whap, whap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know nowadays you want to sit down and you want to, well, let me tell you why it's so important for you to do what I say. Because if you make up your bed, it's going to look nice. Well, no, I don't care about it looking nice. Ain't nobody going to see it but me. But, but let me explain to you why. No, no, no. I ain't explaining to you why. Let me tell you you're going to do it because I said. Well, wait a minute. You, you better give me an understanding because I'm analytical. You better explain to me why. No, no, no. Ain't nobody going to. I'm not going to. Well, we might have company. They might look in your room. Well, it ain't got nothing to do with that. Uh, you're hearing what I'm saying in this place. And so we treat God the same way. And so when it became, the, 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 the commandments were given, guess what people began to think about? The enemy began to drop those thoughts in their mind. Why? Man, my neighbor got a fine wife. Why? Can't I check her out? He might die. He old. Why? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Why can't I do that? So he attacks the logic of the law by applying the why. Why can't I eat the fruit of the tree? Why would I die if I ate what God made? Why shouldn't I listen to the serpent huh, that beguiled me, Eve? Why shouldn't I listen to that woman you gave me, God? Adam, why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I? And so he begins to attack the why. So we have to learn to understand the why. Because it's easy to dance in the middle of blessings. It's easy. It's easy. Oh, we'll party in here. You let me tell you somebody got a new car outside. Oh, the church will turn cartwheels. We start talking about people getting money and things happening. Church will turn cartwheels. When we get ready to burn the mortgage in this place because it's about to be done, the church will turn cartwheels. And all those things are good but tangible. They're good, but they're tangible. They're things that are carnal. Those are things that we're just doing and those accomplishments. And I'm glad about some of those accomplishments. But can we praise God when he's got us over the whipping post? I never like being spanked and I never like punishment. But through all that, I never stopped loving my parents. And I'm grateful to this day for some of the no's they told me. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the no that the man of God told me that's in my life. I'm grateful. Didn't always like it. But I'm grateful. A lot of things I didn't even understand. Because, you know, sometimes we, we, we want to we wanna go, why, well, why not? Why? It don't make no sense. Why can't I? But God has an order. He's trying to do something in our life. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers, begin to mourn because that which I should do, I can't do anymore. It's not. There's nothing happening. There's nothing. There's nothing to showing. People are getting dismayed. They're tired. They they don't believe like they used to believe. It's harder. I get tickled when people try to tell me that young people just don't believe anymore. The devil is a lie. The problem is, is the generation before was too busy having church and forgot to minister to their families. That's what happened. Here's the problem. If the people were to keep the law of Moses' covenant, 
and the blessings come in the presence. Watch this. Where do we find freedom? Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty or freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord isn't, what happens? There's no liberty. Right. Now watch this. This is plain. This is ABC stuff for you. Huh? Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord isn't, there is, liber there is no liberty. So what do you think it looks like? When there's no liberty, watch out. Don't answer that too quick. Because instantly, when Adam bit into the fruit, he began to notice something that he never noticed before. He began to see things that he never saw before. And because he could do that, he felt like that was something special. He felt a godlike complex. I can now see things that I never saw, but also what happened was there's a transition of the separation from him and God. I call this the season of him walking in the afterburners of what it was like. His next day was the same as the day before, except now he just sees things differently. Be careful, because when the enemy begins to pipe things in you and encourage you with things that are not of God, the next thing you begin to see is what the enemy wants you to see, and guess what you begin to agree with? What the enemy, because he forgot about death because death didn't hit right then. If he would have died right then, if he if he'd have walked over and found Eve there decaying in the garden, he wouldn't have took a bite. But because he saw her live and everything was looked okay, he said, give me a bite too. And he took a bite. All of a sudden, the covenant was severed. And because of that, death entered into humanity. Because of that, uh, that which grew up that was beautiful now had thistles and thorns. Because of that, no longer did he have a recliner in the garden. He had to work by the sweat of his brow. No longer was Eve just going to have children. But now, all of a sudden, she had to go through labor. And all the sisters should say, Eve, I need a smack your teeth out and because of all that that's what happened because of one bite because it looked good and we said to God or Adam said to God why can't I uh, and so we hear we find Joel is telling them, Joel's telling them, make sure that you teach your children about what happened. Make sure you talk to them about the consequences. Make sure you let them understand that you don't want to go down this path. Why? Now, I understand. We will say stuff, and, we, and it is true. What's the greatest teacher? Experience. So sometimes we want them to hit their heads and learn from them own. Because parents, I know the frustration. You tell them don't do that, and their friends will tell them do do it. And they will listen to their friends more than they will listen to you. Why? Because the principle is the same as that in our relationship with God. Because instead of asking God why, if we just did what God said, our children would have an understanding. Watch out now. And then I'm not going to question this thing. I'm going to do exactly what God said, but I'm also going to do exactly what my parents said. Because they're, uh, follow me as I follow Christ. Because of that, and then all of a sudden now, they're not looking at the bride. But when the parents are looking at the bride... They may never touch the bribe, but they talk about it. Wow. Can I talk to you, the what if people in here? Wow. Come on, I know y'all not the only one that drives by sometimes and I see that billboard up there with them numbers on it. Uh, uh, and them big, big millions of dollars, and I know we need to pay the church off, and I know we want to build a life center, and I know we want to buy that other property, and I, I know there's other property in Indiana needs to be prayed. I know all that, and I look at that, and I know I see saints struggling. I want to give them full-time jobs and just pay them just to be, be in the ministry, and I want to do all that. I look at them numbers, and I be like, whoa, if then, if I had that, I could do this, but here's the thing. In order for me to get that, I'd have to do something to get that, which means I'd have to sell out something to achieve that and then I'm all in messed up trouble but so can I talk to you? you can't play in the devil's playground too long in your mind because you're thinking about it and the next thing you'll know your children are doing what you were thinking about <laughs> I get a temptation is is always around and we're going to be in we're going to be tempted 
And that's for all you ameners. Listen, be careful before I conclude this. For all you ameners that amen things you ought not. Because amen means I agree. It really means so be it. It is a declaration. And there's times that we'll put an amen where it ought not be. We agree. Now, you may never even say amen. But by action, you're decreeing it to be so. And so we have to be cautious of this. We have to stop asking God, why? Why am I living for God and I, it seems like I'm struggling? And why are they living like the devil, for the devil? And it looked like they got it going on. Nobody else does that. Nobody looks at the neighbor like, how oh, they got all that stuff. I look at some of my family. And I'm not just talking about my close family. I'm talking about extended family. I'm like, how they go on vacation every other week? How they, how they, how they got all, why they, how they got a new car? They driving this and they, they, every time I turn around, they got a new house or got new furniture. How they do it? How they doing? How they getting all this? I can't understand how they doing it. They ain't going to church. They ain't praying. They ain't. Oh, they go to church. They do the, they do the, 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 the CEO services. You know, Christmas, Easter only. They doing that. They ain't doing nothing for God. They might sit in a tight check at now and then, but it look like the blessings are there. But they're, they're being blessed. No, they're being bribed. But but that bribery, watch out now. Please understand this. That bribery is not to bribe them. That bribery is to bribe you. It's you looking at what they have, wanting what they have. Come on, David, looking out over the window. Why was Bathsheba right where she was at that very moment? Because the bribery was set. That the people of God would fall trapped. Fall into the trap. And so we forget to tell them about that. I wonder if David ever took time to talk to his son Solomon about his mama. Now let me tell you, Saul. Let me talk to you, brother. Now look, I love you, baby. But daddy was looking out the window when he shouldn't have been looking out the window. And because I did that, who should have been your daddy was murdered. And uh, I just want you to know, and because I did what I did, uh, I, my mama's beautiful and everything, but because of what I did what I did, you had a sibling that had to die. And, uh, and you don't want to go down this. Please understand, because if you look at the life of Solomon, Mr. Wisdom himself, um, who had wisdom but did not keep it, uh, because he began to look at strange women, uh, just like daddy did. Oh. And what David did in, in just a little bit, Solomon took it to the excess. But what would happen if David said, look, I messed up. And the wages, look, I can't even build what God wanted me to build. I've got the finances, I've got the skill set, I've got the people. But when I go to God, God, I'm ready to build your house. God says, no, you a man with blood on your hands. I can't use you. But I'm a man after God's own heart, yes. But there's a limitation here. If they obeyed the promise, his provisions would remain. Please understand this. In the midst of a famine, God can bring what? Provision. Y'all don't remember my brother with the multicolored coat, the many color coat? Y'all remember that? When, 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 when everybody else was starving, God had put him in a significant place to make sure that the people of God, his family, who had despised him, could be fed. Not only him, but all the land could be fed because God is a provider. If you just learn to stay. You have to understand the why. Why is this happening? I don't know. But I do understand this. That God is not playing. 
If I'm in the middle of something, I'm there for a purpose. And God is going to bring me out better than how I went in. It's like baptism. You went in a dry devil in baptism. Thank God for us who got baptized today. By the way, God bless you. Now it's your choice to come up a wet devil or to come up what's wet on the outside still looks the same. Your eye color didn't change. Your complexion didn't change. Hey Amen. Even that uh, corn on your pinky toe still there. I don't know if I'm not talking about this. I'm just talking about period. Whatever was going on in your life externally was still there, but what did not get wet changed. And you got to believe that what God did is not They'll still see you as the same you. I know. When I first got saved many years ago, come up out of the streets. When I got saved, Brother Nigel, do you know what they said? Oh, boy, that's just a fad. Yes, you're just going through a phase in your life. That ain't nothing. You're going to get over that. You are, you are, yeah, you are religious now. Wait a minute. You were just getting high with us last week. How, how are you going to be doing all of this? I know what your life story is. You just hang out just a little while longer. You, you're going to be right back in it. Here I am some 30 plus years later. God has kept me and those who mocked and those who criticize take this the old man passed away and behold all things have become new I've never gone back to the drugs I've never gone back to the alcohol I've never gone back to the things of the world why because God did a work in me And so I got to tell my children, not only about my blessings, but about my whippings. I don't want you to repeat what I, they don't want to hear it. I know they don't want to hear it because the, the first thing they tell you, I got this. Maybe you do. Most likely you don't. Because if you can't hear, and it's always the why. Isn't it funny, people, once, once, once the whipping starts, then they want you to come and pray for them? The saints of God want to give God 50% of their time, and then when things get messed up, they want you to, uh, Pastor, and you pray. Did I tell you not to do that? Yeah, but you know, uh, can you pray for me now? What if I said, no, I prayed then, and I don't need to pray now, because you getting what you deserve because you didn't listen. But we as the men of God, we don't try to hurt your feelings, but in the back of your mind, that's what we'd be thinking. Uh huh. I told you so. I told you don't do that, which is why. Now did you learn? I tried to help you along the way, but you didn't want to hear me. I always know when somebody wants a different answer because they'll go to me last. And when I say last, I mean after they signed the papers, after they already knee deep in it, after they went down to the courthouse and got married, after they done, then they want to come and ask me about stuff. Now, now we don't have that going on in here right now, but uh, we've had had it. And, and they want to come and ask me then, but they don't want to hear what I have to say because they got an argument. Because the bribe looked too good. And I, I don't want the little blessing no more. I want the big blessing because I'm sick and tired of waiting for my time. When will it be my turn? You better get an understanding of the why. Why are you where you at right now? Huh? Why are you in the, why are you in the wilderness right now? Because there's a generation in your life that has to die off. There's some things in your life that have to come out because they're still there. Even though you've changed your mind and said, yes, I'm going to be in church now, but there's still things that's working. I don't know any perfect people in here. Maybe you are. God bless you. Please see me after church and tell me how you got there. But I know that there's still things in me God is still working on. He's still building on. He's still tearing and ripping and cutting. And, and, and now he's strategic. He's doing laser surgery now to get on the things that I didn't even know that were there, sister. Those things within me, he's working on those things. So I have to remind my children, listen, I'm not there yet. I haven't made it, but I'm trying my best. But let me help you stick on, stay on course, do what's right. Well, they're not doing, I'm not worried about that right now. I'm talking to you. 
When people start talking to me about what, what, well, that church doesn't do this and that church doesn't do that and that church doesn't do that. Why are you watching them? The Bible says, keep your eyes stayed on me. Jesus said that, not me. Keep your eyes stayed on him and he will keep you in perfect peace. If that's the case, then that's where my eyes should be. I can't be looking over there looking for an excuse to do what I want to do. I promise you, I promise you this. You can find a church that will agree with your sin. I promise you that. They're out there. You can do whatever you want to do. They're out there. The do as you please churches are out there. Huh? 7 o'clock a.m. service to 7.15, 7.30. You done. You have done your weekly due diligence. You dropped off your pennies in the pan, and you come up out of there, and you feel like you're sanctified. Huh? They have told you nothing about coming away from sin. They never told you that sin will kill you and destroy you and is a cancer to your children. They have never told you any of those things that when the time comes, there are going to be those that will hear the trump and those who will not. They never told you any of that. They never told you to change your life because they expect you, when, they, when you get weird to, to confront them, they're going to ask you, don't you have a Bible? But there's people out there that will agree with whatever. Parents, guard your babies. Guard your babies. Guard them. Pray over them. Pray with them. It's cute right now. It's cute when the, when the toddlers and the, and, and the babies are praying with you. It's cute. It's cute. But there's coming a time when the influence of this world, look at our teens now, the struggles that they have. Because now they're listening to everybody else's voice and not the voice of God. Because, they're, they're, and, you know, and, and people will say stuff to them and, and they're going to be like, yeah, I always wondered why. And as things begin to draw them in, unless we give them the understanding. I want you to understand why. Why we pray like we pray. I want you to understand why we fast. I want you to understand why. We live a separate life from the world. Why? I want you to understand why. I don't want you to just think we just do this stuff. That was the problem of the church of old. They had all kind of rules, but they never told you why. They just expected you to do it. And guess what? We did. And I'm better off for it. Uh-oh, watch out now. I'm better off, but this generation is the Y generation. And Y, I know it's generation X, Y, Z, whatever it is nowadays. I understand, but this generation wants to question everything. And because of that, we have to give them the understanding of why. So here, the locusts are coming. Job is here. Locusts are coming. We've got to figure some things out we got to figure out what we're doing. So let me give you a quick summary because I, as I, I am coming to the closing of this because I don't want to bore you any longer. No. In the very beginning of the book of Joel, the first thing is a summons to the people to listen, the old men and the rest of the people. I need the aged men and I need the rest of everybody to listen. He begins to talk about the locusts, which is God's judgment and call to repentance. It's, he begins to talk to them, the locusts are coming, and they're here for a purpose. And it's, it's a call, watch out, it's a call for what? Repentance. Mm -mm -mm. You're missing this. When you get, watch out, in the midst of mayhem, and you see the world doing what the world is doing right now. I know you're not blind. Aren't you seeing what's happening around this world right now? If nothing else, in your own neighborhoods. You're seeing the murder rate increase. Why is it increasing? Didn't make any sense. Nothing new under the sun. Why is it getting worse? And you're in the midst of all this madness. And people are becoming homeless 
every day. Why is this happening? Why are the churches shutting down? Why are the pastors now pacifying instead of preaching? Why are these things going on? And all of a sudden, you're looking at things and looking like, if I go and I do something different, I'll be blessed. No, but we call that what? Bribery. But if I stick with God, I'm going to have to suffer. Yes, you will. Let me help you with this. For some of y'all might be afraid of this, but the reality is what the scripture says. If you suffer with him, you will reign with him. And some of us don't. We want the reign, but we don't want the suffering. We don't want to go through anything to get what God has for us. Why? Because again, we are an instant, uh, a microwave generation that doesn't want. To, I don't want to start at the bottom. I want to be the CEO. If you can't hire me in making 100000 how dare I take 30000 There's nothing in me that wants to do that. Why? I'm more important than that. But God is trying to tell you, I wasn't trying to give you a $30,000 job or a $100,000 job. I was trying to put you in a position where the person sitting next to you, the cubicle over, would see you in your word, would hear you praying. It was never about what I was about to do for you. It's what I was going to use you to do to create create revival where you are but you're worried about what I look like I don't understand why they're getting promoted but I'm still here your mission isn't over And you want the hundred thousand and God wants you to have the million but you can't understand that because you can't be grateful because you don't understand the why How many of you would give everything you own for all your babies to be in heaven? All your family to make it? How many of you would give? Don't tell me you will. Because when the test comes, when you got to stand up in the midst of your demonic family and make a stand right in before them, for Christ I live and for Christ I die. I bind and rebuke every devil in your life. And they kick you out of the family. And they don't invite you to stuff no more. Now you feel isolated and nobody wants to talk to you. And they think you cuckoo. But God said, I had you right where I wanted you. Because somewhere down the road, one of those or multiple of them are going to text you privately. Can I meet you? And you tell me about this God thing that changed your life. I was lying in bed last night. Amen. And an angel stepped in the room and told me. I wish somebody would get this in your spirit. There's a why attached to your struggle. And so they are going through a season of loss because they had lost their way. God has a way of getting your attention. I tell people all the time, the Bible says God stands at the door and he knocks. If any man answers, he'll come in, and he'll, or if you open up, he'll come in, and he'll sup with you, and you can sup with him. And Oh, what a beautiful scene that is, except we're sitting over there with our earbuds on, and he's knocking, but we're not hearing him. And in today's uh, society, we have ring, and we have the camera. That's just God out there knocking. I, I ain't ready for that right now. I'm going to wait. Yes, I, I got a little while yet. I got some things in me I got to get done before I commit completely because then I can't do this and I can't have that. And I, I'm not quite ready to get that and God is knocking. And every now and then, uh, God begins to knock harder than he has ever knocked. And all of, we begin to think it's something crazy happening. What's going on in my world is being all shook up. No, that's the knock. That's the sound of the knock of God knocking at the door, trying to get your attention. You're about to step out into a place where you can never return. So he is banging on the door, trying to get your attention. So the locusts came and they 
devouring everything because there had to come a time when you had to learn that God is your provider. Because sometimes we get so into ourselves where we think we got it. Uh, we start looking at our check, and our check's a little bit bigger, and we start, we start looking, oh, man. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, you know, you, how many of y'all want new cars? Yeah. A few hands. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. This ain't a trick question. <laughs> how many of y'all want new car notes? <laughs> a couple of hands say they want that car note. Okay, God bless you. I don't want no car note. Just a, I'd like to have a new car, but I don't want a car note. <laughs> but it don't work like that unless God does it. <laughs> but God, and he's able to do that. But I'm here to tell you right now, <laughs> it's not about that because we like the car until it's time to change the oil. <laughs> we like the car until it's time to put tires on it. We, we like the car until we miss that note and that truck is out front. Don't eat in my car. Y'all yeah, 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 people get your new car. It ain't got to be brand new. It's new to you. Huh? You know that dealer sprayed that fake new car smell in there and carpet all clean and don't eat in my car. <laughs> get some crumbs off, bro. You kidding me? <laughs> no, 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 no. But you know, y'all got some friends that spill whatever. Whatever they got, they spill. Uh, you understand? And you're saying, don't, don't do that. But then what happens when you get a big stain? All of a sudden, the value depreciates even in you. That blessing that God gave you is now not as valuable as it used to be. When you get that ding in your door, that scratch in your paint, now it's not as attractive to you. You used to park all the way at the edge, away from everybody, but now you got dings on it. You just park right up next to somebody. <laughs> yeah, they're going to ding my door. So what? It's already done. It's already done. <laughs> Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But that's how we treat God, isn't it? <laughs> God, I'll worship you as long as it's new. But when the newness wears off. I'll mistreat you. I'll forget about you. I'll call you when I want to call you. And if I don't call you, don't call me. We have to understand the why. Why am I where I'm at right now? Why are you sitting in this church right now? No, you talk to those at home. Why are you at home right now? Now, I get it. No, don't, don't say, well, Pastor, you know I told you I was sick. I know those that told me you were sick. I know. I'm telling you, I'm not getting on you. But I'm talking to people that are out there while you're at home right now. Uh, well, we, we can't go to church. Church is closed. Uh, we're open. <laughs> in the chapter uh, in one, the same book, it begins to talk about the certainty of destruction. The certainty of destruction because God will purge his people. Has anybody ever prayed that prayer? Yes. Purge me. Yes. That's a level of destruction. Some things get tore out of you. And when God begins to purge, watch this. huh? He is like brothers. I'm talking to brothers and that no, I have wives like mine. Not, not, I don't know if everybody's like mine, but I know mine. When she begins to purge stuff, it's always my stuff that gets purged first. Or more of my stuff. Y'all hearing me? Does that make sense? Some of y'all, y'all are quiet now. You're acting like I can't say that because she's sitting next to me. Yeah, my, my wife know. I, I tell all the time, baby, I, yeah, where's my stuff? Oh, I didn't think that was any good. I threw that away. Well, who told you to throw that away? But it was, it, she was cleaning up. <laughs> Cleaned out the refrigerator. Thought, hey, I went in to get my sandwich. Where my sandwiches? Oh, I thought that was old. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I see your sandwich still here, but mine gone. <laughs> In most cases, it's not like that. In most cases, we have a friend that comes over to the house, and my wife will give them my food. And I, I'll come in. I got my mouth ready, trying to get I'm going to get, get me something there. I, got, I already got the bread out the other day to make a sandwich. And I, I open the drawer to get, because we had some tuna. You know, I eat like a little tuna salad every now and then. And I reach in there to get my tuna. I said, wait a minute, the bowl gone. And I looked in the top of the refrigerator, and the bowl gone. I said, baby, where'd my tuna go? I gave that to so-and-so. I said, you did what? She said, yeah. Uh, she needed a little something I give it. Uh, you didn't give her what? You didn't give her your stuff. <laughs> Y'all know I'm just picking. Happy anniversary, boo. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta understand the why. The why was she felt led to do 
it. The why was there was a purpose behind it. <laughs> Amen. I almost tell that person don't come to my house no more because that happened a couple of times. Why you all? Why you all? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Y'all trying to figure out who it is. No, it ain't Sister Angie. <laughs> It's not, it's not, it's not. I'm just picking, I'm just picking. I heard her giggling, so I just wanted to pick. It's not her. So he talked about the destruction. The next thing he talked about was a command for the morning. Not the morning as far as getting up in the morning, but the morning. The commands to begin to mourn, to repent, to lament, to be sorry for the things you've done. Then it moves on talking about the day of the Lord. Remember I told you to highlight that. And it talks about who can endure it. If you cannot endure in the green times, how are you going to endure in the dry times? We're talking, we're talking as if we're actually in tribulation right now. We act like the world, that we're at the end times, it's already over. The war of Armageddon is starting right, right now, and we walk out the door. We act like, women, come on, we, we, we act like people just losing their jobs and losing their mind. We act like it's happening right this minute. What's go, how are you going to act when it really gets tough? How are you going to act when the church has to come together and live together and go underground? How are you going to act then? Well, I don't like people. I don't want to be around. I can only deal with people for so long. What are you going to do then? Go back out there in the world? Go hide in the wilderness by yourself? Are you gonna, what are you going to do then? If you can't handle it now. Now, let me, get on my, let me get on my bully pulpit now. If you can't keep what we got clean now, how? Do you expect God to bless us with more? Come on. Come on. We, want, we want the family life center, but if we can't pay this 12000 off. Y'all better hear me. The command to repent. Then it moves on in the second chapter, about verse 18. It begins to move forward, and it says... The future removal of the saints reproaches. Because God never leaves us without an out. Are y'all hearing me? Huh? And he's saying that I'm going to begin to remove some things uh, that have come in to destroy. The removal of the northerners, they're getting put out. The restoration of the locust years. Oh, wait a minute. We started doing better now. Something seems wrong. Then it begins to talk about the future restoration of Israel. And that's when we get to that scripture that we like. In the last days, he's going to pour out his spirit on all. Let's watch out. But there had to be some things that had to happen before. Not just the first locust attack, but a second locust attack. You have to purge yourself. Everything that you used to depend on. Everything other than God that you put your faith in. You have to be willing to let it go. Do I have any people in here that understand what I'm saying? You have to be willing. When God says go, to walk off your job and you don't even when God says because some of y'all lying on God when God says move you got to be willing to step out on faith and understand I don't know how he's going to pay these bills but when God said go I have to go why because sometimes our job that's why we I mean, hold on that's why we'll wear our bodies down working two and three jobs and then can't figure out how we can't stay well Mm -mm, mm -mm. And we keep on doing everything to try to satisfy the needs of the flesh, but not understanding that God is screaming at us, please, I'm trying to deliver your soul. And so the understanding of the why is so important. Can you live on the minimum and be happy in God? Can you? Can you? We have an Americanized mindset. Well, we're from here. We have an Americanized mindset. In most countries, when you go to visit those countries, you'll find out 
that their houses are tiny in comparison to ours. And that generations live together. Many have one bathroom. Oh, my Lord, not one bathroom. Some of us would lose our mind right now. <laughs> Can you hurry up? We would lose our mind. One bathroom, are you kidding me? That's a cardinal sin. I, obviously, that's in the Bible somewhere. You must have at least two, preferably three. And so many of us are so caught up into what we're caught up into that we can't suffer, even the small suffering. And so those other countries that are not like us, and I'm not undermining what happens in America. I'm not coming against it. I'm all for what God is doing in our lives and what the blessings of the people here. But you better stop taking everything for granted. Do you understand one, one critical move in government or in another government can stop the entire economy in America, and you will foreclose in your houses, and you will lose your cars, and you will lose the things that you, that you think are so precious to you, and then the only thing you have to hold on to is family and faith. But what if we put those things first in the beginning? Faith in God first, and then family. What if we locked ourselves in with God, and then locked ourselves in and ensuring that our family understood faith? Not understood what we won't do in the world. Don't, don't, understand, don't understand whether we can sing or not. Don't, none of that stuff, but understand why you have faith in what you have faith in. I know this isn't shouting material, but I'm here to tell you right now, I'm excited about what God is trying to do. Because in the midst, watch out now, in the midst of what's happening, some of you are worried about the morph of the... Uh, COVID virus, I'm not worried about things, and I, I understand, I understand, I'm not, I'm not criticizing that. Some are worried about whether it's going to last, or whether it's going to, what's going to happen next, and some are worried about that. Let me tell you what's happening right now. The locust is here for the repentance, that the church would repent, but now not only us, but that the world would repent. One of the greatest, many, many meaning small, many revivals that took place was after uh, the bombing of the Twin Towers. People ran into the church because all of a sudden they understood that something could happen like that and thousands could die. The difference in this plague and that is that the enemy understood, I can't let them run to the church. I have to keep them away from the church. That has absolutely nothing to do with us asking the question and understanding the question, why? Why is this happening? Because the enemy desires to destroy us. Why am I going to allow that to happen? I'm not. God, if you're allowing this to happen in this world, there's a purpose. Let me make sure that I'm ready. Let me make sure that everybody around me is ready. Let me fall on my face and repent. Where? Not in hiding, but in front of my babies. How are you going to teach them to repent and you're pretending like everything's perfect? I'm right at the end. Y'all good. Y'all good. So the spirit is poured out after all these things have happened. Guess what happens after the spirit is poured out? Huh? Wonders. Wonders. Miracles. Signs. And wonders. Brother Eric, guess what happens after that? Guess what happens after that? The survivors stand up. The survivors, because those that lost their way in the battle, those that were watching everything else and forgot to watch God, got eaten up. But the survivors began to experience 
the greatest move of God in all the generations up to them. Can I tell you right now, millennials uh, and those who are younger than millennials, let me talk to you right now. God is about to do some of the greatest work in your life. Uh, you're survivors because your parents uh, are survivors. Let us stand. So why is this happening? I'm going to ask you to ask yourself and to be honest with yourself. Not with me, not with your neighbor. It's no time to try to, try to pretend or put on airs. You don't have time for that, but I'm going to ask you to ask yourself and be honest with yourself. What's holding me back? Ask yourself, what's holding me back from doing your will? Go on, ask yourself, ask yourself, what's holding? I want us to submit everything, but what's holding? me back. Will I survive this? Will I come out of this? Come on, I need you to be talking to God, talking to yourself right now, not me. Don't be looking at me. Don't be looking at your neighbor. We love to talk about what in our vernacular we call the rapture or the great calling away. I want to remind you those are the survivors. They may be dead in flesh, but they survived. They stayed in the will of God. Do a little deep soul diving right now. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Just take a couple of minutes. Come on. A self examination, God. Am I, what am I telling my children? Not just with my mouth, but with my actions. What are my children telling their children? Come on, lock into this right now. Don't let it go. Don't let it slip away from you. God is trying to heal some people right now. Some know that they could stand stronger, but they bend to the will of the flesh. If you know you're struggling in your flesh, why don't you just begin to pray, God, strengthen me. Why don't you just begin to pray? Renew a right spirit in me. You're, you're struggling right now. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on. I know it's kind of low key in the house right now and you... You're wanting a big move of God, a big push of God to come through here so it can be exciting. But right now, uh, you're in surgery. Come on, Lord, in the name of Jesus, move us. God, move us away, dear God, from delusion. Move us away, dear God, of complacency. Remove us away from complaining and move us into a place, God, of passion for you. God, renew it in us, God. Lord, in your name, Jesus, right now, where excuses have a hard time reaching us. <laughs> come on, come on, it's quiet. It's quiet, come on, in the name of Jesus. I'm not asking you to, to jump and leap and run the aisles, but I'm asking you to get deep, deep calls unto deep right now. 
You need to understand the why. Why are things not working out? Why? Uh, why are you struggling so? Why? Come on. Uh, stick with it in the name of Jesus. Come on, God. Uh, oh, Lord, help us in the name of Jesus, God, to hold on, God, to you, Lord. Uh, the winds of time are trying to blow us around, God, and buffet uh, the people of God and cause them, Lord, to be uh, like a daisy, Lord. If I I don't have to push any harder than I want to, that's okay, uh, God, because you understand, no, 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 no. God wants you to know, no, it's not a time to surrender uh, to the flesh. It's time to press. Come on. Uh, I applaud those in the house right now uh, that made a press even tonight not to allow the flesh to hold you captive ah come on in the name of Jesus would you pray right now in the name of Jesus God began to renew within us Lord God that prayer life that life of prayer and praise from days of old that prayer dear God remind us dear God of that day Lord when we first believed what it was like God when you first delivered us and help us God to remember God how far you have brought us and Lord let us not go back let us not listen to the voice of the enemy trying to have us question your will but Lord help us Lord to have ears to hear your voice God oh Lord that we will not follow a strange voice Lord there's winds of doctrines Oh, there's delusions of devils. There's things that the enemy is trying his best to pull us through and cause us to go to, to pull us away, God, from your will. I pray right now, Lord, all over this place, the sound of my voice, God, that you would put stoppers in the ear, dear God. Amen. Blocking the sound of the enemy and releasing the deafness to your voice. I pray right now, God. God, that you would purge our eyes, dear God, from ungodly sights and ungodly desires from our heart, God, that our minds, oh God, would stay on you, that we would be kept in thy perfect peace, God, in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, come on, saints of God, right now. There are those in your family that are struggling. Would you pray? Would you pray for the teens right now? Would you pray for our teenagers right now, our youth? Would you pray? In the name of Jesus, some of us may have failed. Amen. We're doing what we should have done early on, but it's not too late. Would you pray, God? Hallelujah. Pray to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. For our young people, God. Would you pray? Come on, would you pray in the name of Jesus for our youth right now, Lord? Lord, they're subject, dear God. Oh, so often to being bombarded, hallelujah, by their own flesh and the things that are being piped to them in this world. God, I pray that every parent in this place, God, would be stronger and bolder than ever before. God, and our children, our young children, our teens, God, that they would be stronger in the Lord than ever before. I pray that any stiff neck, hallelujah, spirits that try to enter into them would be broken and destroyed right now. I pray in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that drugs and alcohol will not touch their lips. I pray in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that they will not be bitten by a lust spirit, Lord, or drawn into filth. I pray right now, Lord, oh Oh God, that you would cover them. Hallelujah. From the lies and deception that the enemy wants to perpetrate in their lives. I pray, Lord, would you pray for them with authority in this place? Come on, mama and daddy. Grandma and granddaddy. Uncle and aunt. Brother and sister. Would you pray in this place? Joel, come on. I recognize God is the Lord. Ah, come on. He taught us Sunday, baby. 
Come on, would you pray right now? Hallelujah, come on. Would you let go of your inhibitions? It's 8.59, I know. I know you. some of you are ready to go, but would you let go of your inhibitions in this place? Would you let those things loose right now? Would you pray an earnest prayer, a prayer, hallelujah, of total healing and deliverance right now? Come on, in the name of Jesus. The devil has stolen too many of our young people in this city the enemy is killing them in droves why because there is a miracle amen in some of their lives some of them are coming out amen and we're going to be great men and women of God so the devil like in days of old is trying to kill them off come on would you pray would you pray? Would you pray for our college students? Hallelujah. Is there on the campuses and the lies and perversions are being preached as if it was academic scholarship to deny God and follow your flesh? Would you pray? Would you pray? Why did they shut down the schools? So you could have children away from the filth. know it's inconvenient but what a time you wanted them to go to Christian school now they're in your house what kind of school is that come on in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. You can stop live stream, glory to God. Uh, oh God, I bless you, I bless you, I bless you.